Hi, it's Yasmin Tamras with Long Beach Local News. And today we are speaking with the new interim superintendent president of Long Beach City College, Luann Bynum, who will be speaking to us today about some of the transitions and measures that the college is implementing. We're joined here by the new interim superintendent president of Long Beach City College, Luann Bynum. How are you today? I'm fine, Yasmin. Thank you for allowing me to come on and share some thoughts with you all. Well, thank you so much. I mean, this is a really bizarre time that we are in, and none of us had expected it to go into this direction. And you yourself have resumed this position, or started this position more like, uh, just a couple of weeks ago amidst this whole craziness as the pandemic outbreak um, was also basically forcing the college to to come to a halt, to move all the online classes. So how much of a greater responsibility have you had to feel and take on to adapt to these changes that we're experiencing? Well, the thing about coming on at a time like this is I come on with an assumption that uh, school will go on and we'll have to adjust a little bit, but really within um, about a day and a half, you know, I had to make the decision with my executive team to shut the campuses down. I never expected to have to do that. Um, and it's a huge responsibility as far as I'm concerned, because I feel um, every decision that we make and everything that we do that impacts our students and our faculty, you know, is going to have an effect on faculty's ability to deliver and teach and our students' ability to be able to continue their education. So um, we go from hour to hour sometimes making these decisions and trying to come up with solutions that make it as easy as possible. But, you know, it's a huge responsibility, but it's a re huge responsibility, I think, for all of our leadership team and our faculty. Yes, absolutely. Well, now you've also obviously had to implement those online courses. And so how is that going? How many are being offered and what kind of student feedback have you had? Well, we've, I'm amazed we have phenomenal faculty. We have managed to put close to 2,200 courses online, some of those remotely, but most of them online. Um, and we um, did that within three or four days, about 80% of them. So um, that's going well. Uh, we also ended up having to train faculty um, how to use the new methodologies and the tools that they have to work online. So we had training for about 1,500 people, and we did that in about a week and a half, which was incredible when you think about everybody adjusting and having to get ramping up to speed and delivering their classes online. The faculty are amazing. They're doing peer mentorships with each other. They're sharing best practices. Um, the students have been amazing. I know we've got some hiccups with the students and some of the technology, but we can talk about that a little later if you like. But, you know, relatively speaking, given what this has asked of all of us, including our students, it's gone fairly smoothly, I think. I think also that Long Beach City College was out of the gate a little bit earlier than some of the other community colleges, and that's helped us to be able to anticipate where we're going and what we need to be thinking about. Well, it sounds like, you know, you've really had to adapt in such a quick way. And, um, you know, there are obviously also really a few concerns from students as to not being able to afford their rent or even have enough money for food. So what does our Long Beach City College um, offer or what are they able to do to, in order to support the students with lower income? That's a huge issue when things are normal. In, in the normal delivery of classes. But we've got about 40% of our students on financial aid. And um, we have housing insecurity, we have homeless students, we have food insecurity. Uh, we have the Viking Vault, which is um, a service on both campuses that we had during the regular session. Now we're offering at the Pacific Oaks campus grab and go bags of groceries for students. We have gift cards that allow students to um, go to grocery stores. We have vouchers that we can use for some of our homeless students and some of our students that do have housing security. The great news is that the federal government just recently passed the CARES Act and each community college Long Beach City College will get anywhere from about 11 to 14 million dollars to be able to service our students and manage this COVID uh, virus and do it in a teaching modality. Half of that money goes to basic needs for students. So we've got a lot of resources for students if they go online 
our COVID-19 response page, go into the student bucket, there's a lot of information there. Absolutely, I've been seeing on your social media of Long Beach City College of all the updates that are going on and how students can like actually follow up and um, stay in the know really and truly. And mm -hmm. speaking upon then, of course, there's a lot of issues then when it comes to being stuck at home that can really delve into sort of a, a, a specific type of um, mental health state as well sure. as some form yeah. of lack of activity. So what does the college offer to its students in order to maintain such well-being? And is there any support when it comes to mental health as well? This is really stressful. I know that students are very anxious. Um, some of our faculty as well. Um, it's hard, you know, everybody worries about their family and their loved ones and themselves. You know, we want to make sure, number one, that our students are safe um, and healthy. Number two, that they can continue their career path. So any of those stresses that we can reduce and lower the, the barriers to be able to get help, we're working on. We've managed to put our counseling, we have a counseling platform that we put online that is actually a 24 seven uh, counseling uh, availability for students to schedule appointments. Um, we also have resources that we can, uh, uh, direct our students to if they go on to that website. But one of the things that we want to make sure, you know, we're delivering laptops to students and Chromebooks. We're setting up Wi-Fi hotspots. You know, we want to reduce all of the things related to education as much as possible so students can feel like they can take care of these extra things related to COVID-19, but at the same time really continue their education. And um, I would just encourage all of our on that website and take a look at that because that's really important for them to have those resources. Absolutely, that's really great. You yourself, you know, you touched upon the faculty, but yourself, how are you maintaining uh, a great mental state and positive spirits as well as, you know, your own well-being? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I stay focused. You know, I, 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 if I stay focused on what we're doing at the college, you know, for me, it's, um, you know, I don't have a lot of time to worry about the other things. Of course, I'm aware of it. You know, I have a husband that isn't in the best of health. So I do everything I can to make sure that um, we're taking care of ourselves, but really focusing on the college and what's going on. And then I, I have a little yippy chewini and I walk in <laughs> times a day and that takes care of <laughs> So going on a little, a little bit of a walk is also very healthy, especially when you have yes, a little cup of tea. Well, that's great to know. At least you're maintaining your own well-being too there. Mm, and hopefully your husband you. can um, be a little bit better and safer soon too. Um, well, so there's a really amazing uh, no-cost rapid assessment clinic also going on on the Pacific Coast campus. How did this all come about and why was that the perfect location to set such a clinic up? Well, the city has an emergency uh, incident team and they mobilized very early on and um, we've been talking to them for a while. They had come and made visits of both the campuses to see if they could be able to use those spots if they had to. I think they recognized that the Pacific Coast campus was a perfect location to be able to handle some of the overflow. I mean, we're lucky to have the healthcare institutions and the medical centers that we have here in Long Beach, but um, they can't handle everybody. There's still people getting sick that don't have COVID-19, but um, so we set up, we worked with the city to make room for them to be able to come and do that testing center at the Pacific Coast campus and also um, have mobile ability to somebody that isn't feeling well, no matter what, to come in and be serviced. But it's been a great partnership. I'm really proud of our city and the fact that they took action early on. And I knew immediately, we all felt the same way, that we'll do anything we can to help the city. The community where the Pacific Coast campus is located is one of the um, per capita lowest um, per capita incomes in the city. So it's a perfect location too to capture people around the neighborhood that otherwise may not have transportation or can't make it to another place and have an immediate place in the neighborhood that they can go and get care right away. So wow. we're really happy to have that. Yeah, that sounds like it was really well thought through and especially putting it in that location then. Um, so you did touch upon briefly about some of the blips that have been coming up on the online courses. What have been some of the biggest challenges that the college has faced since its closure? 
park closure. Yeah. Well, the challenges, I think, are making sure that we get the tools and the resources to the students and the faculty. Um, you know, faculty are used to having a bricks and mortar um, location and seeing their students every day. It's really hard not to be able to see your students every day. If you walk on our campus now, it's deserted. It, you know, it's a stay at home thing. And so the vibrancy of the campus and seeing students engaging, you know, that's gone. But um, I have to say that the faculty have just been so incredible about making connections for students. We're case managing students that we think might have dropped off. You know, we're worried about that. We're keeping track of that. We don't want students to drop out of their educational path. We want them to continue. And um, I think those are the challenges. But I, you know, our staff have been phenomenal. We've done a, a, an, an amazing IT department that is so innovative and creative that in our student services area, we put all of our student support services online. So rather than having to come in on a campus and register or get information about financial aid, it's all there. It's accessible it's relatively easy and a lot of that has been created during this crisis and I think I'm a believer in silver linings we're gonna we're gonna have better capabilities when we're done with this to be able to serve our students actually absolutely um, well it's very interesting how things are shifting and it's great that you're keeping on track on a lot of the students and to make sure that they are on track too Right. Um, mm -hmm. Any idea as to what will happen when the college can welcome its students back? Well, we just had a chancellor's office call this morning. Um, we are fully remote for the spring semester. We are figuring that we'll probably be remote for the summer semester. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping to maybe be able to have students come back at the beginning of June. Um, some of the conversation is that not knowing how this virus is going to go and when the peak times come, we may have to be ready to ramp up again to do things remotely in the fall if there's another peak. So we're just going to have to play it by ear. Um, you know, I, we would love to see students come back on our campus. You know, one of our main concerns also is our career technical programs. A lot of those programs, it, you have to have hands-on experience and you can't teach a welding class or an electrical class and have safety without um, supervising students carefully. So we're looking at creative ways to be, enable our students to come back selectively perhaps and with distancing perhaps be able to finish those courses. But, um, you know, every day is, is like a, a, you know, what can we do to solve this problem? And um, I'm just so impressed with our staff though. I just am honored to really serve with them. They're great. Yeah, it really sounds like you've got a really great support structure and you're really implementing mm -hmm. as you have to go. We really don't know how long this is going to go right. on for and have to really live day by day. Um, yes, so this is exactly. teaching a lot of things, yeah. right? Yeah. And of course, I, I got to ask, since you have such an impressive, phenomenal track record in economic development and strategy planning we're all obviously aware that going on lockdown and limiting businesses from being open to the public is creating a huge dent for people to reach their basic needs and overall is a detriment to the economy and so huge. would you have advice yes hugely so would you have advised the current governor to impose the stay at home rules that we're experiencing right now Absolutely. I think the fact that California, if you look at the data and look at the curve and the whole purpose of stay at home is to try to flatten that curve and not overload our medical institutions. Now they're saying the modeling is saying that, you know, perhaps we'll have fewer deaths, but I don't think there was a choice other than to have a stay at home um, direction to the public. Um, but with regards to the economy, it's going to be a major hit and is right now a major hit for our economy. You know, we have six to seven million people just in the last three weeks that have applied for unemployment. Um, you know, a lot of my career has been directed towards not only education and training, but also serving businesses to be able to create jobs and small businesses in particular um, are going to be really hit with this. So um, the one thing I would suggest, if I may, um, we have the Small Business Development Network at Long Beach City College for the LA region. Um, the SBA has put 
$250 million into loans for small businesses, I would encourage people to utilize the services of our SBDC because those services are free. They'll help people get the loans that, is, that are available now through the government. They'll also help small businesses and advise them how to weather these kinds of things and how to ramp back up. But um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a while before we get up to a full economic engine, I think. Where can these small businesses find their services? They go on the website, Long Beach City College. They look for the SBDC. It's easy to find. And you'll get um, immediate connection to services at the SBDC. We have one in Long Beach. And, um, you know, we were seeing, the whole network was seeing about 50 to 60 people a week. And now we're seeing about 50 to 60 people a day. But we can handle that capacity. We've directed more personnel towards those resources. So please do go on and get that help because it's there and it's free for small businesses. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, well, what do you think we should prepare for in these upcoming months then and or years even as a result of these measures? I think that what we're all going through is something that, you know, whether it's an earthquake or a virus or some other natural disaster, these are the kinds of things we need to be prepared for. This has given us uh, an opportunity. It, it presents an opportunity to be better. I do believe that um, our institution will be better after this. I think we are going to learn a lot of things from this. I think we're going to be better at serving our students. But you know, we all have emergency response plans at institutions. But this is this has been a way to test that out and to strengthen our responses and catch those gap areas that we hadn't thought about before. So not only are we going to be a better educational institution, but I think we're going to be better able to respond to emergencies. Okay. Well, hopefully so. And um, how do you think we could transition through this economic turmoil with a, potentially with a little bit more ease? Um, I think the transition is, I think we're transitioning now. I mean, we're literally transitioning from week to week. Um, when it's when the virus is over, if it's ever really over, but at least the influx of the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, we will ramp up. We will go back to semi-normal. I don't think it's going to be the same normal that it was before. And I, I, don't, I think that's going to be the case for a lot of businesses, you know, and um, it'll be a learning opportunity. And, um, you know, I think we're going to have to do everything we can to help our students. My big concern is also we do not want to lose our students right now. It's easy when things get tough to just drop out and say, I need to take care of my family. So I would just encourage our students, stay with it, hang in there and stay with us. We're going to do everything we can to get you through this. Well, that was actually going to lead into my final question as to the students who want to get to know you a little bit, because of course, they're not really getting to know you in person in these times. And you just started this position a couple of weeks ago, although you've been part of Long Beach City College. Um, what is a final message that you'd like to share with everybody? Well, I come from Long Beach. I was born and raised in Long Beach. I have always, I never wanted to live anyplace else. I've never wanted to live um, or work at another institution. I worked at Cal State Long Beach for 10 years. I've worked at Long Beach City College for 20 years. Um, I've been involved in the community. This is a rich, diverse, wonderful community. Um, we have very wealthy people and we have a lot of people that live in poverty or on the poverty line. I, my message would be come to the college, stay in school. Those of you who aren't or want an education, come and take advantage of the education you can get. It's a life changer for us. We've got the Long Beach College Promise that supports students literally from pre-K through postgraduate work here in Long Beach. You can stay within the confines of the city of Long Beach and go to school. And we don't want to educate our students and have them leave. We want them to stay here. We want them to live here. We want them to learn here. And we want them to work here. You know, so, um, you know, our arms are wide open and I know it's the same with our unified school district and it's the same with Cal State Long Beach. So please stay in school. Well, thank you so much. You haven't been to school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or just join school, you know, and right now yes. is a good time to learn, to learn and grow. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much for sharing your time and um, 
letting us get to know you as well. So we've just had a conversation, if you're tuning in, with the new superintendent president of Long Beach City College, Luan Bynum. Thank you so much for joining us here today again. Yasmin, thank Hope you. Stay safe. Yes. Yes, take <laughs> it. And go Vikings. <laughs> go Vikings.